Joining us right now is former lieutenant, uh, New York Lieutenant Governor Betsy McCoy. Uh, last week, Trump tweeted that the Unaffordable Care Act would soon be history. Betsy, good to see you. Good to see you. And I'm glad that President-elect Trump stressed for everybody, because when you hear the Democrats protest repeal, they don't talk about the large number of people who are newly uninsured. And what Trump is doing when he says everybody, first of all, he's offering an assurance that he's not going to eliminate Medicaid. And that's where three quarters of the new coverage came from. The 20 million. That's right. 16 of the 20 million are on Medicaid. And that will be up to the states, but that, that will be funded. But here's the other really important thing. We had uh, 6.9 million taxpayers who paid a penalty this year. Mm -hmm. That's about 10 million people in all who are paying a penalty for not being insured. And another 12 million who are getting hardships exemptions. Why? They can't afford yeah. the Affordable Care Act. It's unaffordable for them because they're not getting a free ride with all these subsidies. And then you've got on top of that, uh, another five million people who are technically covered mm. because they're in these plans, but the deductibles are so big they can't cobble together enough money to get to a doctor. And that's where, Jagan, the, the connection to the economic growth story happens, right? Because all these people are paying all this money on health care. Businesses are as well paying more money on health care. That's why they're not adding jobs elsewhere. Right, and it was a law constructed essentially to encourage small businesses to hire part time workers because of the 50 employees. Role that if you've got 50 or more employees, that you have to provide them with health care. Well, they kept their staffing levels at, at 49 percent and then hired part time workers on top of that. But I'm so right that. about that because, in fact, we have the shortest work week on record now because of this. So many part timers wow. pushed down from. 35 hours to maybe 28 hours to avoid that 30 hour cutoff. Yeah, and 5.9 million people out of the latest jobs report were part time workers. We saw actually uh, small businesses, for, businesses with 49 employees or lower, only added 18,000 jobs to the latest number. Mm -hmm. So they're holding back. Small businesses aren't growing. And that goes into the election of Donald Trump because they were getting hurt, especially by tax policies of the Affordable Care Act. I mean, these things yeah. really hampered the economy. Yeah, and Jonathan Gruber came on this program and he said that oh. the health care legislation has nothing to do with economic growth. Well, they're like, because it'll work if everybody signs that's up. That's true, and I went not. I mean, that's... Well, the, the well, Democratic were towing the line. He admitted he lies about work. everything he says about well, Obamacare. That's, that's like, what tipped me off. I mean, when yeah. I brought up what you've said repeatedly when Kathleen Sebelius was on the program, when I brought up the fact that small businesses, according to the National Federation of Independent Businesses, their number one concern is health care costs. These are thousands of small yeah. businesses that were polled. You know what she said? They always say that. They've always said that. I'm like, well, that means that they Obamacare didn't always fix said it. that. They said summer. that under Obamacare. Right. And I'm like, but that means that you haven't fixed it in eight years. That's right. That's the and, point. And it's right. not only the private sector. Community colleges, municipalities all over this country push down their workers to below 30 hours yeah. to avoid having to pay for Obamacare. So the question is, how, how quickly does this move through? I mean, it's going to move through very quickly because Paul Ryan is no match for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Paul Ryan planned that this might take years, and Donald Trump and Mike Pence went over to Congress and said, no, this is going to be happening well, very, very quickly. I just want to raise my hand on that. Yeah. You know what? If taking your time means getting it right, I think that if you look back at the Affordable Care Act, you know what? Take a breath. Yeah. And they're going to have, they can't do it through reconciliation and a simple majority in the Senate. They've got to get, they've got to get some of the Democrats on board with it. But so you know what? Votes. Americans don't want to pay these premiums in 20 I, I hear that. But Dagan's got a really good point because Democrats tried to ramrod this through over the course of two years. Yes. They should have been able to do it in a much tighter period of time if they were just more efficient and more intelligent about how they were going to pass it. But I think Speaker Ryan, and I'm no big fan of his, um, I think that he's handling this the right way by breaking this up into pieces. Instead of passing one very, very large bill to replace it, you they're going I to take this that. item by item. Yes. And, and I think that that's the appropriate thing to do so that business owners know what they can expect instead yeah. of just having to get this big bill that we have to digest at the end of the year. This is the right way to do it. Let, let, let's move on to the, the uh, auto story. This is a big one as well. Trump is continuing to focus on the auto industry as it relates to specific companies and imports. Now, he did an interview with the German newspaper, Bild, and he said that he will implement a border tax on BMW for cars exported to the United States from their new factory in Mexico. 
Trump tweeted about this yesterday. Here's what he said. The Democrats are most angry that so many Obama Democrats voted for me. With all of the jobs I am bringing back to our nation, that number will only get higher. Car companies and others, if they want to do business in our country, may have to start making things here again. Win. Uh, now, Betsy, Trump has scrutinized a lot of automakers over the production overseas. Is he going to be able to get a German automaker, yes. BMW, to change production plans? They have a plan to build cars in Mexico, and then they sell the cars all over the world, the U.S. included. But the fact is that he knows that it's not just BMW. All the major German car companies are planning on expanding or building in Mexico and selling to the U.S. market. It worked with... Toyota, it worked with Ford, and now it's going to work with the German car companies. He made a pledge to bring these jobs to the United States, and he's going to do it. BMW already has an American plant in South Carolina, in Greenville, South Carolina. They make the um, SUVs. They make the SUVs there. And so, I, I, look, they, they've shown that they're willing to produce their cars here. Mercedes is building a truck plant in South Carolina. Volvo's building a plant here in the States, too. So there's a precedent for this, and if they start to invest in plants here as opposed to Mexico, that's a win. Yeah, but Where there's, there's economic consequences. Of this, prices will go up. The, a lot of the cars right. that are manufactured in Mexico are the lower end models that make which the cars the more affordable with for BMW. People. It's the three series, which yep. is their cheapest. And Chevrolet with the Cruze. We know SUVs are manufactured here, mm -hmm. and that's a higher profit margin business okay. for the automobile manufacturers. But guess what? The lower end vehicles that they're making overseas, it's a cost of labor issue. That's why they're so cheap and affordable. Guess what? Those cars won't be anymore. And, and I'll, they'll do it. I'll point. Them. I don't know. I'm going to point the finger back at Donald Trump and his administration because at some point they're going to have to draw a line because there are a lot of parts that go into these automobiles, including the American, uh, the American automobiles manufactured here that come from overseas and it becomes an increasingly difficult mm. situation. Yeah. The BMW car or SUVs that are built in South Carolina, only 10% of the parts that go into those vehicles come from Canada or, the, or North America. Mm -hmm. So are you going to start taxing the parts that you're importing to actually build? Because again, you're going to have to pick and choose which jobs you think are the most that important. Does get, that does get and it gets confusing. super, super tricky. Yeah. And these are great headlines. But in terms of overall policy, that's altogether more complicated. And we complicated. didn't even stress the service with automation, to too. He was elected to do this. Yeah. yeah, but automation is impacting the car industry, too. And that's had a significant repercussions on the jobs in that industry. Yeah, for sure. All right, we will leave it there. Betsy, great insight. Thank Thanks you. so much.